So Google has finally announced the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro. Here are all the things that you should know about these two devices. So first and foremost thing, the Pixel 7 Pro has a 6.7 inch 1440p 120Hz adaptive panel. Whereas the Pixel 7 has 6.3 inch 1080p 90Hz panel. Now about the 120Hz panel, well it is still not LTPO 2.0 technology which I was hoping that Google will introduce that display technology with the Pixel 7 Pro but they didn't. It's the same 10 to 120Hz adaptive high refresh rate panel just like the Pixel 6 Pro. This year though, the curve is a little bit more subtle than it was in the past year and the Pixel 7 still has a flat 90Hz panel. Now as for the batteries though, there is a bit of change. 5000 mAh battery on the Pixel 7 Pro down from 5300 mAh battery on the Pixel 6 Pro. I don't think that's a big difference. But the Pixel 7 being a smaller device than the Pixel 6, it has a 4270 mAh battery compared to 4614 on the Pixel 6. That's a big difference. And that might sound disappointing but then Google has announced extreme battery saver and that is a feature that is technically possible thanks to the Tensor chip and the Android 13 and that will provide about 72 hours of battery life. Now that's a big claim though but do keep this in mind this is all like the most perfect condition and that's where they can have 72 hours so in reality you're probably gonna get lesser than that but it will still be impressive to see. The biggest difference in these devices are in the camera department and most probably we have to start with the 5x teleport lens that can be found on the Pixel 7 Pro but not on the Pixel 7 and it heavily relies on the AI and machine learning capabilities of the Tensor G2 chip to deliver really good photos according to Google. Thanks to the 48 megapixel 5x teleport camera, the Pixel 7 Pro allows for a 30x hybrid zoom and this teleport camera offers preset zooms level like 2x, 5x and 10x. The 2x though here is actually actually cropping into the 48 megapixel shot so it is not exactly taken with the teleporter camera. At 5x though it will still use the main camera sensor too because that's how Google will be able to take a much crisper photo at the same time it will have much less chance of being a blurry photo. Google has also provided one new thing after 15x zoom you're gonna be able to have a stabilized video on at least on your screen so small bit of handshaking movements won't really affect your photo capturing experience that much. Now another Pixel 7 Pro exclusive feature is the macro focus which uses the ultra wide angle cameras autofocus technology. Now they haven't gone deeper with it but they have said that it is much more crisper and you can go very close and that's it. Now meanwhile, the hardware restrictions like there is no teleport camera so the Pixel 7 only can do up to 8x hybrid zoom, that's it. The 50 megapixel camera is identical between these two devices. Now aside from this, there are tons of photo features like Google trickeries like photo unblur which is actually really cool. In the Google Photos app, even if you have taken the photos with your iPhone or DSLR camera or anything like that and there is a blurry photo, it can actually use AI to process that to unblur the photo. And that's a good feature. And then there are the typical features like magic eraser, a real tone and cinematic blur. Now you're probably thinking what is cinematic blur? It is similar to the iPhone cinematic mode. That means it's kind of like portrait mode for the videos. Now both of the devices also have 10.8 megapixel front facing camera with faster f2.2 aperture and it is much more wide angle. Now both the Google Pixel 7 and 7 Pro also powered by the second generation Tensor G2 chipset which is actually a slight of an improvement over the Tensor G1 and that's the only reason they are not trying to brag about how faster their chipset are compared to other chipsets because they are not. It's all about the AI capabilities here. We've already seen the benchmarks if you want to check out that video I will link down below. It's about 10% performance boost over the Pixel 6 series but then do keep this in mind these artificial benchmarking applications don't really measure the capabilities of the other parts of the chip like the TPU or ISP or stuff like that. Those are something that you only be able to experience in real life. Now memory and storage wise we get 12GB of RAM on the Pixel 7 Pro and 8GB on the Pixel 7. The Pixel 7 will be available in either 128 and 256GB of storage options. The Pixel 7 Pro on the other hand will have a half a terabyte extra storage option so if you want that then yeah it is here. Also do keep this in mind none of the Google phones have either headphone jack or a micro SD card slot. The design of the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro or overall the size is almost similar to the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Not so different. The Pixel 7 is slightly smaller than the Pixel 6 but the Pixel 7 Pro and the 6 Pro look almost identical from the front. The camera bar and the metal frame are made out of one single piece of aluminum. The Pixel 7 Pro has the glossy finish 
which they are bragging about. And the Pixel 7 has the loved matte finish. Overall, the whole design looks very familiar. It's the camera bar, it's the pixel look, it's the visual look. The Pixel 7 comes in obsidian, snow, and lemongrass colors, while the Pixel 7 Pro comes in obsidian, snow, and hazel color. Both of the phones also have IP68 dust and water resistant, steady speakers, and dual SIM capabilities. One nano SIM, one e SIM. Now, as for the biometrics, well, both of them has a new under display fingerprint scanner and face unlock system. And this is something that is possible thanks to the new 10.8 megapixel front facing cameras. Now the last thing, the price and what I think of it. The starting prices of both of these devices look almost identical to the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro. That means $599 for the Pixel 7 base model and $899 for the Pixel 7 Pro's base model. So that makes the Pixel 7 a must buy at that price. Literally saying, if you love the stock Android and if you love a premium device at that price and a good camera device, then this is the one. But then that also makes you think, is the Pixel 7 Pro worth it? Well, in my opinion, it's not. It's not that much worth it. All the extra features are good to have, but they're not something that will be $300 worth it. At least that's what I think. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, which one you are getting. Or are you just straight out gonna upgrade from Pixel 6 and 6 Pro because you're getting a good trading offer? Let me know. And before the outro, here's one big important thing. Trust me, this is the best freaking wallpaper pack I have ever created. Now, this is the Agate Series 3 wallpaper pack. This wallpaper pack has 18 super high resolution 8K wallpapers custom made for your tablets, laptops, and your smartphones. You can visit the link in the description below to check out or simply visit my website jointheavit.com for a lot more than these wallpapers, tech news, and so many stuffs. So yeah, definitely visit it. Until the next one, bye and take care.